Hi folks, Mark here. You join me in the heart of central London on New Bond Street where I'm heading towards Bonham's Auction House where I'm going to be checking out the Sir Roger Moore, the personal collection, a special auction that is coming up in October 2023. I've got an appointment with a guy called Joseph who's going to give us a tour of the collection, a description of what's going on and give us an insight into some of the more unique and rare pieces that are going to be up for auction in this collection. So I've just arrived outside Bonhams. There you can see the lovely portrait of Sir Roger in the window. So let's head on inside and check out what they have on offer. Hi folks, Mark here, Views from Mark. I hope you're keeping safe, healthy and well as always. I am here in the heart of central London at Bonhams, who are one of the world-renowned auction houses that you can come across. And I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Joseph Robson. Yes. And Joseph, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what Bonhams do and kind of why I'm here? Because I'm here to view the Sir Roger Moore, the personal collection, as it's called. You've got an auction coming up. Can you give us a little bit of information? Yeah, happy about to. That? So my name is Joseph Robson. I'm one of the specialists in the popular culture department here at Bonhams. Uh, we're an auction house that uh, has offices based globally and de deal in all manner of uh, categories. Uh, but when it comes to popular culture and important single owner collections, um, it is often based here in the New Bond Street headquarters. Um, um, you know, our current one is this Sir Roger Moore, uh, his personal collection, which yeah. is coming up uh, for auction on the 4th of October at 1 p.m. here at London. Um, and it's a fantastic opportunity to be able to offer uh, memorabilia, posters, um, costumes made for the film that he then wore, um, and be able to, to share these some of these Holy Grail items yeah. uh, and give uh, fans and collectors alike a chance to bid on them. I mean, it's amazing. It's an amazing space you've got here, first off. Um, as you come through the entrance hall, you kind of get this sense that you're entering a very special environment and then you approach kind of your first kind of main reception and kind of gallery presentation spaces and you're greeted by the Sir Roger Moore personal collection. You've got massive cinema screens playing clips uh, from the movies and interviews. You can immediately see all the lots in one space, which we're going to have a look at shortly, don't worry. Um, but how did this kind of auction, because as you say, it's coming up in October, mm. right around International James Bond Day, which is great, perfect timing. How did this all come about? Because I believe it's kind of working in direct collaboration with Sir Roger's estate, is that right? Yes, so this is what's special about it, is that Bonhams is working directly with uh, the Sir Roger Moore estate and, and with his family to bring this collection, uh, Roger's own collection, um, to, uh, to, to the world. Yeah. Um, so it, it's great to be part of that collaborative process in order to you know, champion Roger's abilities as an actor, as a, as a fundraiser for charities, uh, as, a, you know, as a prolific award winner, um, and, you know, it's great to work closely with the family on such a personal collection, which, you know, fans will recognize some things immediately, uh, like some of the costumes from A View to a Kill or, yeah. or Octopussy or, or other films of his um, uh, from the Bond era. Um, but also, you know, posters and, and scripts uh, and items from across his career. So it kind of spans the entirety, you know, everything from The Saint through to, you, you know, potential work in the, the 2000s. Wow. So it's, yeah. So as you say, it's not just Bond that we're. This is, and in terms of when auctions come about, provenance is and the history of an item is always very key because if you're bidding on something, you want to know well, is that actually where it's said it's from? And mm. provenance doesn't really get any better than it actually coming from Sir Roger's estate, does it? This is what's so fantastic about it. Is you know often uh, you may get items which. Uh, come to market with you know once in a blue moon or you know it's one or two pieces um it's rare that you're able to get uh, you know an entire collection let yeah. alone from you know the principal actor from you know from james bond himself it's uh, an extremely rare 
uh, privileged to be able to offer such a thing. So we're we're hoping to do it justice and to and to celebrate his legacy and uh, and you know give fans a chance to bid on his collection. That's amazing. I mean, it really is a special collection. We're going to have a look at this very shortly. Now, I know that there's, I believe there's a, a charity element to the auction as well. But I mean, do you have any favourite standout pieces that we'll have a look at shortly? Um, that if if money was no object to you. What would you be bidding on? I mean, all of it, obviously. If you won the Euro Millions tomorrow night, I, I would certainly be bidding on it. If <laughs> I'd be I back again. No, I would be. Uh, well, for, for me, the uh, the View to a Kill, um, Douglas Haywood a dinner suit is fantastic. You know, in all of the promotional material, you know, so all the posters or the production stills, that iconic Eiffel Tower chase scene uh, just Incredible. always sticks in the memory. Yeah. So the fact that we have... Uh, you know the suit from the production yes. is is an absolute joy. Um, but you know we have other things that kind of uh, straddle the line between Bond and Sir Roger's personal life. The uh, the Bogner skiing suit is a great example uh, that would have been. Um, is that your view a view to a kill is that the pre also the view to a kill? I believe yeah the pre-title sequence yeah. with the nice. snowboarding and the um, incongruous use of California girls. I think. Yes. Uh, but you, you know another iconic sequence it is um but also you know we're offering that along with uh, many of roger's own uh skis which he used after the bond films wow, okay. um so I, I like the idea of roger continuing to use that very ski suit in his own personal skiing adventures absolutely and, and so a lot of the items are, are are things that kind of sir roger kept after he'd completed on on these various films which is in itself quite rare because usually film production companies, they're very, very protective of keeping hold of, of costumes, props, things like that. But yes, there really is a, a, a wonderful collection of, of items here on display. And this is open for people to come and view uh, up until the auction, is it? Or so for a limited what, time? What we're going to be walking around uh, and going around uh, today is the uh, preview exhibition. So it's about 100 lots from the auction, but okay. the, the main auction itself will be around 200 lots or so. And so there will be another full pre-sale exhibition in the days leading up to the 4th of October auction. Wow. Which you're very welcome to come and see again. I, I would love to. I would absolutely love to. I will be, I'm, I'm, I'm around then. So who <laughs> knows, folks, I may well be back. So I, I'm assuming then you're kind of releasing more information as you get, kind of get closer to the auction, kind of building up the heat and the anticipation if there's yeah, we're, going to be two, over 200 lots. Yeah, actually. we're hard at work on the catalogue as we speak, uh, and we're very excited to be able to share um, you know, more memorabilia, more watches, um, more, more suits, uh, along with other pieces of memorabilia. Um, from his collection. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so excited to go and check out this collection. But speaking of watches, and I know that you, you've, you and your team have kind of done some background digging, so to speak, into <laughs> me, and you, you know that I am a fan of watches, and you've actually got something on the table here in front of us, which is something really rather special. I will get some B-roll of this so you can see what we're looking at. But can you talk us through a little bit about what we're seeing here, this magnificent very Bond-like suitcase full of full of watches. Yep. So, th so this brown attaché case opens to the the Swatch collection of of Bond watches. It came out in the early two thousands between the the Brosnan and the Craig eras to to celebrate the fortieth anniversary of yeah. the film franchise. Um, and so there is a watch from representing each of the first twenty films in the James Bond franchise, uh, including, of course, all of all of Rogers, and I believe it uh, would have originally been produced from a, an edition of 280. Okay. Uh, but the example we have here, it has a special plaque dedicated specifically to Roger Moore from Swatch. That is amazing. I mean, there are some truly stunning pieces in, in this collection. Swatches that I've never seen before, certainly. I'm sure a lot of my viewers won't have seen these before, but I mean, the presentation is second to none. I mean, each watch, as you say, has its own place, its own mini plaque, dedication to that particular film. And just to have that that plaque as well that says this is, you know, a limited edition piece that is gifted to Mr. Roger Moore, as it says, it should be Sir, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll overlook that for now. I always refer to him as Sir Roger. Very good. Um, but yeah, this is this is amazing, and this is just a taster of what people can expect to see within this collection and the preview, and and actually on the day when it when it 
you know comes up one one question final qu quick question before we move on to mm. actually have a look at the the lots that are on display valuations are always a really tricky thing i've seen plenty of auctions before i'm sure a lot of my followers have as well where there's valuations given on props on costumes on watches and posters you know whatever yeah. it may be, be that's film related more often than not the valuation is always blown past and it goes for eight ten times what what it what it is advertised as a valuation how tricky is that for you to kind of balance between knowing the value of something and what it might achieve and the expectations of say the client whoever that may be mm. i mean what's what's the process like for you guys when it comes to giving valuation i That's, mean the provenance obviously has to be key but here it's kind of yes very very set in stone already well i think the word you use balance is is a fair one you know so it is a bit of a balancing act where you have you know the item itself in isolation which may have a particular auction value yeah um, the provenance like you say uh, can often help uh, an item so with something you know directly from sir roger's collection uh, you know the provenance is second to none yeah um and then you know one of the things which you can predict to an extent but you kind of let happen on the day is that level of bidding interest in the moment in the heat of the auction moment uh last year we offered uh sir michael kane's personal collection uh in march sir 22. michael kane god bless you sir not a lot of people know that but not it's a lot uh, of people do know that but uh you, you know we had one of his rolexes and it was uh, wow. estimated in the region of uh ten thousand pounds but i think it sold for around one hundred thousand pounds so there is that kind of that star quality that magic factor which you know you can see it being in this case you know sir roger's uh, own watches and, and pieces um, but there's something that really resonates with with collectors around the world and, and may result in uh, exceptional prices on the day. That is incredible. I mean, when it comes to owning a piece, a legitimate piece of film memorabilia, film history, something from someone, whether it's Sir Michael Caine, God bless you, sir, or Sir Roger Moore, um, you know, how often do these kind of opportunities come up? Not very often. So I can I can easily understand why... So Michael Caine's watch in that instance, as you say, went for over a hundred thousand. It's um, it's incredible. I'll be really fascinated to see what these fantastic swatches are going to go for, as well as I believe there's a fiftieth fiftieth anniversary, yeah, Seamaster. Omega, and it has a, an inscription um, from Michael and Barbara to Roger. So wow, an Omega watch celebrating the fiftieth anniversary from Michael and Barbara to Sir Roger doesn't get much better than that. It it really doesn't. Well, I think. Rather than um, delay any more, I suppose we should really go through and have a look at this collection and uh, and see what's on offer because you've got posters, costumes, props, um, not just from Bond, but as you say, from throughout his career. From the Saint, uh, some of his some of the films done uh, during the Bond era, so North Sea Hijack. If anyone likes that, from the I do. 80s. Yeah, didn't he have like a really? I remember. He had like a really thick woolly hat, a fisherman's uh, jumper on, and, and a, a thick beard. beard a yes, thick beard at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, you, you know films from across his career, wow. uh, including awards and, and posters and production stills. Wow, so. that's amazing. Right, well, Joseph, thank you so much indeed. Pleasure. And without further ado, let's just go and have a look at this amazing collection. So we're in the main kind of galleries space here at Bonhams, where the auction is taking place, and all these preview items are on display now. Joseph, you mentioned that you had a favourite item or two within this collection that if money were no object, you would be bidding on as well. Um, I think we're heading towards them now. Maybe you can talk us through some of these items. Yes, certainly. So uh, in the corner we here we have Sir Roger's uh, Mogna skiing uh, sportswear suit. Um, if we go around, we can see it here. It's uh, from the uh, View to a Kill pre-title sequence uh, that we were talking about where he... Um, at different points is skiing, he's snowboarding, he's fighting helicopters single-handedly with a flare, uh, and then in the end he, he escapes into that ice flow submarine with the, with the British flag on it. Um, but what's great is that he, Sir Roger kept this after the production, uh, and, and uh, you know, his family said that actually there was a, um, a point during his uh, Bond filming where he wouldn't be allowed to ski outside of production. Uh, presumably to to protect him uh, between films, but after a view to a kill, he very much got into it again and uh, became an avid skier. So on the walls behind this ski suit, we see some of his personal uh, 
skis uh, by Lamborghini, by Castle, by uh, Calgary. So a range of makers that he would have he would have continued to ski with uh, after his his several appearances uh, skiing in in the Bond films. Amazing, amazing. And these, as you say, these are all you know from Sir Roger's personal collection, all this sportswear, and I mean this costume in itself. I mean. How rare is it going to be for anyone to have the opportunity to actually own a piece of cinema history? But not only that, something that Sir Roger kept after production and actually utilised along with items like the skis. I mean, just incredible. That's what's exciting about many of these costumes. You know, that some of the examples, there may have been one or two or, you know, some very small number made for the production specifically. But we know there's only one that Roger you know, Bond himself would have kept following the production from the film. Right, okay, so uh, Joseph, I believe we've got, I mean, there's so many items. Maybe you could talk us through some of these. Obviously, we've got some tennis rackets behind you there on the side. Certainly, also one of his other uh, sporting loves. Uh, but, you know, we also have not just costumes from the film, uh, but in this case, we have the US one sheet for A View to a Kill that was uh, Sir Roger's own. Uh, so we have several posters, um, of various sizes, either British quads, US one sheets and some Australian daybill posters signed by Roger. Amazing. Um, we also have several lots that are um, collections of production stills and photographs and promotional images from across his career, uh, including Bond and, and The Saint and some of his later work. Uh, so there'll be several lots with some fantastic images, you know, of him at the Brandenburg Gate or with his, uh, you know, his low Tessbury turbo. Um, that's amazing. Just an amazing collection of images. And I can spot one right off the bat here where we've got Sir Roger with this Volvo P1800 from The Saint. Uh, a friend of mine actually owns um, one of the Volvos that was actually out the front of Pinewood um, as part of the kind of promotion for The Saint at the time. Fantastic. And Sir Roger has actually signed the sun visor on the inside, which <laughs> Brilliant. is quite amazing. But an amazing collection of images here, posters, as you say. Um, yeah, again, all of these from Sir Roger's personal collection, which is just incredible. Mm. And not just a view to a kill, we've got, you know, from Moonraker as well, um, Man with Golden Gun, Live and Let Die. Um, and also, obviously, the, the other key aspect of Sir Roger's life and career was his charitable work. Absolutely. Uh, we know he was an uh, incredibly keen ambassador for UNICEF uh, for, for much of his career. Uh, so we do have some uh, special items uh, from his charity work as well, uh, oh, including fantastic. awards, uh, speeches made um, while traveling the globe on, on behalf of, of UNICEF. Amazing. And this cabinet here, this case is, is displaying some of those, those kind of special items, as you say here. And we've got, there's a UNICEF, uh, is that a UNICEF award here? Uh, is this the Nobel? Nobel I believe that's, that's one of the uh, awards oh, or kind of, uh, you know, there's a program at the Nobel Museum, oh, wow. uh, you know, to, to help with that. But also what one of his pins, uh, UNICEF pins, which if you see in the 90s and noughties, uh, he's, he's very often seen with that UNICEF symbol on his lapel. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's a very important part of his, of his work. Absolutely. That's amazing. Well, it's, it's such a great oh, UNICEF. I know that they miss him terribly mm. as much as we all do. Um, if we come around this side now, I can see a whole wall of absolutely amazing posters <laughs> and images here that I would happily remortgage my house for. Um, <laughs> well, um, we, we hope we've got them in at uh, you know attractive and you know accessible estimates. But it's you know man with the golden guns represented. Even you know his Joan Miro print as well. You wow. know he he collected art. He was also an artist in his own right. We actually offer. Uh, we're offering his portfolio of drawings and portraits and sketches that he would he did in the 60s. Oh wow! Um, so you could uh, bidders, successful bidders, could own a uh, Sir Roger original hand drawn art piece. Yes. Well, we're actually offering his in, his, his portfolio that he he'd kept he kept at home uh, oh, wow. sketches, uh, many of which are signed and dated by him from from the 60s onwards. That's absolutely incredible. Um, wow. So we've got here for your eyes only. We've got the man with the golden gun. We've got yes, and, and the format here. These are the Australian daybill posters, so like narrower and, and taller posters. Um, but what's exciting about 
the Australian Post is that he signed each of them. Oh, fantastic! Uh, it's just that that little um, that extra extra kind of excitement. cherry on top of 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 uh, of awesomeness. <laughs> let's let's face it. I mean, do you have a favourite of Sir Roger's Bond films, or is that oh, that's that's does like that change asking, every day? That's that's like asking which of your kidneys do you like more? <laughs> um, no, I, I I know it doesn't get. A lot of love, but I am really fond of *A View to a Kill*. It's one of the first Bond films I remember seeing as a as a as a young and growing up in the '90s. It was always on television, and I just loved the action of it, mm. the sequences, the music, that John Barry score. Oh, I mean, yes. it's everything that you would hope and want of a Bond film, I think. Um, and it needs more love. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we've got, yes, we've got Moonraker, we've got uh, Man with a Golden Gun. Um, we also have a poster for Live and Let Die, which is appropriate as if you turn to your left and we come round here, we actually have um, first from the back, but then this is the Cyril Castle Chesterfield coat. Um, this is the one that's worn in the introduction or the arrival in New York. Is it yes, not? the arrival in New York and that kind of initial yeah, chase um, in the taxi cab or that, that trailing um, of Mr. Big and his team uh, up to Harlem. Um, Absolutely incredible. That so, blue is, that midnight blue is mm. stunning colour. And I think it's coming out okay on the cameras, but... But also, you know, it's very minor wear to the velvet collar, but actually, you know, for something that's 50 years old, well, that's you know, thing. plus this yeah. year, it's it's fabulous condition. I mean, all of these items obviously have been really well kept and looked after. I mean, that swatch case of watches that we looked at slightly earlier. I mean, I think I commented to you, it had, most of them had all of the plastic protective film still on. Hmm. So everything has been really well looked after. And uh, yeah, it's you would never know this was a coat that, dates back 50 years exactly well fortunately we do have the uh the, the tailor's label inside do we the, uh oh, yeah. see if we'll be able to if i come around yeah, for you so yes we've got so we've got the cyril castle tailor's label to the inside so i know yeah. sir roger would have uh, uh used many of his own personal tailors you know castle roma haywood yeah. uh on the productions um so the haywood uh, suits do actually have the, uh, the the labels with the specific years of production, which actually fit right within that production window for each respective film. Fantastic. So, not only do we have that resource, but like you say, we have the you know the concrete provenance of Sir Roger keeping them um, until today, you know, and in the family until today. And this is, is this from uh, A View to a Kill as well? This also A View to a suit? Kill, yes. This is the morning, the morning suit uh, he wore to Royal Ascot. Oh, of course, um, yes, with the, uh, the racing scene uh, mm. where he's kind of trailing Max and uh, Mayday, Max yes. Aaron and Mayday for the first time. He kind of becomes aware of them, doesn't he? Uh, and, then, and then he wins big and gives the ticket to Money Penny <laughs> to go and cash buy in drink. the box. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so the the tie and the shirt aren't aren't from the film, but uh, that that tie is just an example of 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 some of the, uh, you know, we have a a good couple of dozen ties in some group lots in the sale. So, if you want to, you know, bolster your personal wardrobe with some of Roger's ties or, or bow ties, there's the opportunity to do that. Absolutely, no, this is a, this is absolutely fantastic. Now, one final quick item, whilst I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but sure. one final item I think we can take a look at is potentially a very special watch. Uh, you know I like my Amigas, and you've, you've let me know that there is something rather special to actually be able to have a look at. Uh, absolutely. Today. So I know uh, we were talking earlier about uh, your, your 60th anniversary yes. uh, Amiga, which I'm uh, thoroughly jealous about, but uh, you know we've uh, also got the 50th anniversary. The 50th uh, Amiga. Anniversary you want to take a Amiga. look on the upper shelf here. So oh, this wow. is uh, released in limited numbers for the 50th anniversary of Bond. Uh, and actually the bracelet uh, strapped to the back has an inscription uh, you know, to Roger from Michael and Barbara. Amazing. That is incredible. Uh, am I right in thinking we might be able to go one step further and actually have a look at this close up? Yes. 
uh, are absolutely incredible. Let's have a look. So whilst, whilst Joseph is doing that, just to give you guys a view here as well, below we have a release script for A View to a Kill. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, right, so Joseph has opened up the cabinet and we're taking a really, really special look at something that is really rather special, as you can imagine. Um, Joseph, can you talk us again just through what this is that we're, we're viewing here? S certainly. So this is a very exciting 50th anniversary uh, Omega uh, watch given to uh, Sir Roger Moore in celebration of 50 years since Dr. No. Um, like you were saying before about how we kept good care, he's kept the the plastic cover on um, to, to look after it. But also what's particularly exciting, and we can get some footage of it in a moment, is uh, uh, the, the bracelet strap to the back uh, is inscribed uh, to Roger with love from Michael and Barbara. How so, amazing is that? Is it possible? Am you I, certainly I may. I will not drop it, I promise you. <laughs> that is, what a special piece. I mean, obviously, of course, this is a anniversary piece as you say the 50th anniversary of the release of Dr. No back uh, 10 years ago now just over 10 years ago um, and it's a lovely watch in itself because as we know Amigas are always really nice but here obviously you have on the face of the watch or the dial of the watch you've got the 007 logo going across but mm. the creme de la creme of this piece as you say is clearly going to be and one of the top top selling points is clearly going to be this inscription on the back which, as you say, you know, it says to Roger, and you've got the Amiga logo, love from Michael and Barbara. I mean, it really doesn't get any more special than that, does it, in terms of horolo horology in, in, in itself, but yes. also Bond memorabilia. But also, it's, you know, it's quite moving. It's re recognising, you know, how central a role Roger's had in the, in the success and, the, you know, the enduring legacy of the, the Bond film franchise. Absolutely. Um, that, you know, as, as, as fans and, and collectors are all aware of, uh, but it's great to see it encapsulated in something so, um, you know, so well looked after, so interesting in its own right. Absolutely. And, and as you say, who, you know, someone who is so important to the Bond franchise, to cinema, you know, not just for Bond, but everything, The Saint, you know, Gold, The Wild Geese, you know, his, yes. his list of credits is just no, no. endless and endless. But also to have something in your hand that belonged to someone that meant so much to so many people um, and who, who didn't grow up watching Sir Roger on the screen and his suaveness and the raised eyebrow and mm. the perfect hair and, and everything else. I mean, absolutely incredible. I, I, well, I cannot thank you enough for this opportunity to actually see in person and actually be holding Sir Roger's own Amiga mm. that was a gift from Barbara, Michael and Eon. It's fantastic. I mean, this is one of the, as you can imagine, one of the star lots of the sale. Yeah. Uh, the auction estimate uh, we've put on this is about those 20 to 30,000 uh, pounds, which is similar to some of the, 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 the film suits as well. But, you know, there are estimates you know, from around 100 pound and up. So it's been exciting to be able to offer wow. things that are accessible at, 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 you know, pretty much all price ranges. Uh, wow. You know, if you want that, that one thing that belonged to him or something very specific that's kind of representative of his career and his legacy such as this that can be that that can be done that's absolutely incredible i mean as you say you know catering not catering to every price point but you know to have estimates that start as you say 100 pounds upwards um and to have a star lot like this which you was it 20 to thirty thousand is right, the estimate yes. I think it's safe to say, and I'm going to make a prediction on this, that this is going to go for considerably more than twenty to 30,000, given what we've seen in you know, other auctions where watches um, have been up you know, for bidding. Uh, I think it's safe to say this will probably go for more. That would be fantastic. I mean, you know, we'll find out on the 4th of October at 1 p.m. Uh, here at Bonhams in New Bond Street. Uh, you know, bidding's possible um, live in the room. You can order a paddle and bid in the room. Uh, like bonded in octopusy, no, or... no kind of switcheroos of, of eggs and, <laughs> and things like that. Far from it. But you know, we can also bid uh, by telephone uh, or by absentee bid when you put the bid in advance, or online. So there's a range of ways to get involved and, and put your bids in. Absolutely amazing. Well, look, Joseph, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I'm going to say a massive thank you to Joseph, to all the folks here at Bonhams that have made this possible for me to come down today, have a look at this amazing collection. I'm going to take a look at some of the other items, but Joseph. 
I'm going to say a massive thank you. I'll hand this back to you now, reluctantly, you. but thank I will for hand, hand it back to you. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below to Bonham's website. Um, so if you want to have a look online at some of the auction items, and also you'll have a full auction catalogue, I imagine, coming out fairly soon. Yes, it'll be probably about four weeks before the auction, there'll be a full online catalogue where you can scroll and browse through the entire sale of about 200 lots. Fantastic. 200 lots, folks. 200 lots. So do stay tuned for that. Do check out Bonham's website. Have a look at the lots yourself. You never know. You may want to place a bid or two on something. Um, but look, I'm going to take another look around this uh, amazing collection, give you guys some more views. But until the next time, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. I'll talk to you all very soon. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.